Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Lee and I'm a DIY electric skateboard builder. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a DIY electric mountain board. From scratch, component parts, all the way to a fully ripping, shredding dirt machine. Let's do this. How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel and our series on how to build an electric mountain board. This is the final setup and installation video, which will be the uh, Fock Box VESC tool to get these ready to go. I've got the board on the bench. All we need to do now is set the computer up and I'll show you what we're gonna do. Right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're gonna to wanna to go on Google or your favorite browser and you're gonna search for VESC tool. And you wanna pick the top option, which is the VESC project. Now here is where we're going to get the software from. There's different types of um, packages that you can pick. They're all the same. Um, all it is is that if you choose one of the ones that cost money, you're making a donation to Benjamin Vedder, who's the guy who invented the VESC and all the software. And so I would encourage you to make a donation if you can. I've already made a donation in the past, so I'm just going to choose the free one. I'm going to click Add to Cart. Now you want to log in. Uh, or you want to create a login if you don't have one already. I obviously already have one. And once you have um, logged in and purchased the files, you go to purchase files in the top right hand corner. And you'll see here there are various uh, files you can download. Of note here is also the Android app uh, for free, which is £1.99 in the Play Store. We're on Windows, so we're going to click the Windows tool. Let that download, extract it into your destination of choice and then you're going to click on the vest tool itself you always get this warning just click more info and then click uh, run anyway so guys this is the vesc tool this is where we're going to do all our setup of the, of the motor controllers and the um, controller to set the input now you're going to want to make sure you've got a micro usb um, cable plugged into the computer and plugged into the um, speed controller with the receiver on it. So you see we've got two speed controllers. One has the receiver plugged into it and one has the Bluetooth module. We're gonna go into the one with the receiver plugged into it and that'll become apparent later. So click auto connect and it's gonna tell you that the firmware is old and you need to update your firmware. This is quite common, especially if you've owned the VESCs for a little while. Just click on okay and go to firmware in the top left. Now you see it tells you your current firmware as is 3.56 and 3.57 is available. So I have quite a recent firmware, but not the most up to date. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna click in the bottom right hand corner, we're gonna click send to all. Now you can only do this if you've got firmware version 3.45 or above. If you haven't, just click the little button to the left and then go into the other speed controller uh, with a cable and update that one manually and then come back to this speed controller but we can click all now it's going to wipe all our settings that's fine um, and it's going to upload the firmware to both VESCs because we have them plugged in via CAN so there we go just let it do its firmware update now it's finished and it will restart the uh, speed controller so we're going to click Auto connect again, connect back to it, and in the bottom right corner it showed us that we're on 3.57, and in the top left we're gonna to go to the Wizards, Welcome Wizards, and we're gonna choose the Setup Motors FOC. Now I would encourage you if you can run FOC mode to run FOC, we'll definitely be doing that, but you can run BLDC if you want to. So we're gonna click on Setup Motors FOC. Now choose your motor size in weight, as is a medium outrunner. Most motors for electric skateboarding will be medium outrunner. It's very important that you choose the correct motor that you want to set up because failure to do so could actually damage the motors during detection because it uses certain parameters depending on the motor size to do detection. So there's your warning. We are just going to click yes because we're sure that as is a medium outrunner. Now the next page is going to ask you to choose your battery type. Ours is obviously lithium iron, so we're going to choose that. 
how many cells we have in series. We have 10. And then battery capacity. This is the amp hour of your individual cells times by how many you have in parallel. We are using three amp hour cells and we have eight in parallel, so we're gonna choose 24. Next, we need to choose the motor pulley and the wheel pulley. Here, I chose one motor pulley, two and five wheel pulley teeth, which is the wrong way around. I should have chose five and one, and I later went back and corrected that. And then we need to change the wheel diameter size, which is 200 millimeters. This includes the tires, guys, wheels plus tires. If you're on urethane, just the actual wheel diameter will do. And we're going to click run detection. So, motor detection. There we go. So it's just going to make some really strange noises. Now. That motor's spinning the right way. That motor's spinning the right way. make some odd noises guys it's just detecting all the values for these motors right with that done it gives us all of the specs of our motors and says it was a success so we're just going to go down to the bottom and we're going to click OK now the next page uh, we can choose to spin the motors and check whether they one of them speed spinning the wrong way around which is possible depending on the phase wires um, you can change the phase wires or you can just do it in the app here. You can choose one of them to be in a um, sort of inverted state so that when you press forward, it actually goes forward. So you can just press one of these forward or reverse buttons and you can see the motor spin and you can check whether it's when you click forward, the wheels are actually turning to, in a forward motion or not. Click forward. The other one. Luckily both of mine are turning forward when I press forward so there's no further um, inputs required for me and we will just click finish. So guys this is the remote that I'm going to be using it's by Alien Power Systems I think it's called the Alien Command I'm not sure if it's any good yet we'll see um, I've installed the battery in the remote it's pretty easy to do when you get it you may have a completely different remote to me it doesn't matter the process is still exactly the same. So we're gonna set up the, the controller now on the speed controllers. So with that done, we're just gonna click set up input in the bottom right now. I'm just gonna take us through the input wizard. So it's just gonna scan the CAN bus and it's gonna see how many VESCs we have connected over CAN. And as you can see here, it sees the VESC that we're connected into with the micro USB cable and it also sees the one over CAN. Um, I'm gonna choose what type most are going to be ppm our receiver our remote is ppm so we're just going to choose ppm click next now in here you can choose your behavior of your remote do you want it just to go forward with no brake do you want a reverse like boosted or do you just want forward and brake like we do so we're going to choose current no reverse with brake and you can see these um, bars at the bottom there going up and down and that is uh, related to how I move the um, remote. You can see the center point is at 35%. That's because when I started the tool, the remote was already on and I may have had the, the trigger depressed slightly or something like that. So there is a way to put this back to zero. Just click apply again and it will put it back to zero. And, and that's now hovering around zero, which is the center point for the remote. And when we press the remote in for throttle and out again for brake, you'll see it will go fully 100% throttle and it should go fully 100% brake as well. There we go, so that's behaving quite nicely. We wanna note what percent um, the no input state is and we can adjust the dead band here so that we don't get such a dead part of the remote 10% as long as that figure 10% is more than what it's hovering around when it's not being pressed at all then you're going to be fine we don't really need to mess with any of, it, any of this we can do it's a bit more advanced but we're just going to click next and finish
Now we do have one more thing to do. If we click general on the left hand side and then go to current, you'll see that it sets the values up super weird. Currently, I don't know if this is gonna change in the future, but that's certainly the way it is at the moment. So one of the things we wanna do is we wanna change those battery settings. I mean, that's outrageous, 99 amps and minus 60. We're gonna make these a bit more sensible for a lithium ion pack. We're gonna choose 45 amps max. This is per VESC. And for the max regen, we're gonna choose minus 25 amps. Now that's a bit high, 50 amps uh, in total going back to the battery. But in reality, that's only when the throttle is fully breaking and for long periods of times you could do damage. But as it is, we won't have any problems with that and it will allow us to have stronger brakes. So we're gonna choose minus 25. Everything else looks okay and we're gonna leave it as it is. We're just gonna click right motor configuration to write our new settings to the speed controllers. Now, next thing we wanna do is we wanna to go to the voltage tab across the top and we wanna set up our battery. It's gonna have a soft cutoff. It's gonna start cutting the power down when a battery gets to this voltage. We're gonna choose 32 volts. Um, because we have a 10s battery so that's 3.2 volts per cell and we're going to choose a final cutoff of 30 volts that's going to protect our batteries if we get down to 30 volts the uh, speed controller isn't going to do anything anymore right guys and with that we are finished uh, setting up the board basically so the only thing now is to put the speed controllers back where they need to be in the box put the lid on and go for a test ride Right, that's all gonna go in nicely. So I threaded these holes already for the screws that I've chosen. And uh, yeah, I believe that's gonna all be nice. Well then, does she move? Oh, she does. Whoa. Oh dear. Let's go for a quick test ride. My use case for this board is long range trail rides basically. What I want to do is I actually want to, I want to hit the canals near where I live. There's a canal that goes from Reading all the way to the West Country. It's like quite a few miles. So the general plan in my mind is to build another pack and just have like a super long range drive, like rides everywhere. 
The, board's, the board itself is performing amazingly. I'm super happy with it. Um, I'm going to get some of the other guys to ride it and see what they think. Yeah. Right, guys, my boy Tim, suited and booted. He's going to have a go at the Tramper and get his thoughts, see what he feels about it. Tim, you're an Evolve rider, right? So Absolutely, you... GTR. GTR, yeah. man. Vol in fact, Tim uh, rides for Evolve. You're, you're one of their guys, aren't you? Yeah, community ambassador for the UK. Hell yeah. So yeah. it'd be interesting to see what you feel about this because obviously right, you're man. used to riding yeah, boards yeah. with all this terrain. This is one weird looking remote control. What is this? It's the uh, Alien Command by Alien Power Systems. I'm not a fan. I'm going to change it. In fact, I ordered the Tramper one. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're going to be changing one. that. Yeah, the new one. So. Okay. All right, man, let her rip. Let's see what you think. So let's spin around in circles. All right. So what's your feeling? This is way solid. Like I'm normally used to like a light, real flexy kind of... Yeah, man. You like it? Yeah. Never ridden with bindings either. That is incredible. You like Absolutely it? Absolutely incredible. The power delivery is great. The brakes just, yeah, I feel really safe on it. It's really weird being strapped to the board. Um, being an Evolve rider, I'm used to just, just rolling around on my board and being those double kingpins nice and loose. But um, yeah, when I'm coming back down here, I just gunned it a bit more and you feel safe. You feel really good. You feel locked in, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it was weird at first, but I like it, dude. Also, those bindings allow you to sort of commit your weight a bit more. Yeah, that, I didn't get that on the first one. I'm like, because it evolved, I just, I just relax and turn. And it's like, yeah. oh, it didn't turn. Yeah. <laughs> on the way back, it just got, you know, you've got to kind of like, you've got to go for it. You've got to uh, go for it. I mean, you're used to uh, double kingpins. Double drugs. kingpins all the time, yeah. So yeah. With these are complete opposite. They're stiff, the springs. Yeah. But you've got to commit your weight to turn it, but you like it? This is a good bit. This is the one you've been building on your series. Yeah. It's beautiful. You like it? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I'm glad. I'd like to do some like off-roading on this. Hell yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, we can set that up, man. We'll do it. Okay. Oh, For sure. And that is it, guys. The series is over. I hope you've had as much fun watching it as I have making it. It's been absolutely amazing. And thank you so much to all the subscribers that have come on board through this series. I hope you guys stick around and check out some of the other cool stuff that I've got going on. Loads more projects coming up. Lots of cool stuff, man. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you soon, guys.